Welcome back everybody, it's 39 Minute Workout with David and today you're in my classroom. So if you've been following me all along, I've been doing this, we've been working on building up kettlebell skills from the ground up. I've taught you how to purchase your first kettlebells, how to do the swing, how to troubleshoot the swing, lots of great body weight and kettlebell workouts for fat burning, muscle gain, all that stuff. And now it's time to talk nutrition and other aspects of fitness. So all this week, what we're going to be talking about is what I call the three pillars of health, treatment, training, and nutrition. So treatment, I'll go into in a, in a day or two, but that is essentially mindset. Treatment is not just things like acupuncture or, or, or alternative medicine, which is, I am an acupuncturist, so I come from that background before fitness. Uh, but treatment, what I think of treatment is how do you deal with self-sabotage? How do you help your mind be more at ease? And how do you build habits? And how do you create goals that excite you? How do you stick to them? All that kind of stuff. How do you mitigate stress? How do you deal with digestion and improve it? Uh, how do you fix your hormones when you're in your 40s, 50s, and you've got hormonal changes? All that stuff. Uh, training is, is your kettlebells, your workouts, your how do I build muscle? and do the right cardio and get the results combined together. And then nutrition, duh, we know what nutrition is, that's what we're gonna talk about today. And I'm gonna go through some of, some of my simplest and best tools. Um, if you're on my 10 day beginners only kettlebell challenge, this is <clears throat> one of the early lectures that we're gonna do because nutrition is so key. Now I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna go quite into the detail here that I do for my members, but I'm gonna give you enough so that it makes sense and you can take some action starting today. Um, I do expand upon this a lot in my T39 workout, my online kettlebell program. You can check it out at onlinekettlebells.com. But for you all, <clears throat> I want to do at least, at least hit the highlights and help you understand what I call the five rules of nutrition, which is something I created when I wrote my book a couple of years back. Um, we really, almost all my clients want to lose fat or get healthier in some way, improve their energy, improve their sleep, libido, you know, whatever it might be. They want to improve their health and burn fat. So a couple of big pieces about the way we teach nutrition. I say we, I'm talking to my wife, Abby and I. I don't really focus on a diet. I hate the word diet. I think diets are sometimes a useful tool, but more often than not, what I call my, my plan is a nourishment plan. I want you to focus on nourishment and then proper tools of understanding how to eat, when to eat, okay? What types of foods, when, how, okay? Diets always denote a sort of deprivation and we think short term and we think quick fat loss and quick results and some of those things are good. I'm a fan of certain diets for a small snapshot of time. But the problem with them is even a good diet, like Whole30, fine, it's good. It's meant to be 30 days, they'll even say. It's not a lifestyle. So then it's like, what the hell do I eat now? And I think way too many programs are too, too difficult to follow, way too much counting in points. I always do this in the beginning of a challenge. Hey everybody, who wants to lose weight? Great. Uh, who wants to count calories or points until the day they die? And uh, no hands go up because who the hell wants to count calories and points? It's boring, it's, I don't even think it's necessary. It's, um, I, I th what I find is most people don't wanna do it. Now there's value in tracking, there's value in understanding uh, certain aspects of your food, what's a really high calorie food, what's a high glycemic index or gly glycemic load, if you don't know those words. It's valuable to, do, to know some of that stuff, but once you know it, once you get it, once you get what foods tend to spike blood sugar or have a too many calories or whatever, then it's sort of time to just understand the food, step away and stop counting and stop being, okay? So we want to get you to a simple way. The simple way is the five rules of nutrition. What I teach my clients in my program is three primary tools. The five rules, we have a yes, no list, very, very simple, yes, eat these foods, don't eat these foods, and then finding your 500, which is one of our other favorite tools. But today, we're going to talk to you about really understanding how to get, how you can understand how to put together a diet that's gonna lose fat and help you be healthier. I will tell you, I have a lot of either even slender, lean clients who have done my five rules of nutrition and said, oh my God, when I gave up this and when I started doing that, I, I felt, you know, what are they, more energy, I'm sleeping better, I feel stronger in my workouts, whatever it is, like, 
the idea that we should go on a diet or fix our nutrition just to lose weight is crazy town. I mean, there are a lot of people who look healthy on the outside and inside they are a mess. They're undernourished, they aren't healthy, they're stressed out, they're high blood pressure, high cholesterol, whatever it is. So these principles matter if you wanna lose weight, they matter if you don't care about losing weight but you have other health things you wanna do. And the cool thing about this, what you're gonna love about it, I think, is that you can maintain this as a lifestyle. I don't really care about 30 days of success. If it doesn't hold up to six months of success, then there's a problem with it. You're gonna be able to file this. So let's talk five rules of nutrition, okay? And I do, for those of you doing my 10 day challenge, there should be a handout for you so that you can see <clears throat> this guy uh, and, and be able to have a printout of that because I think if you have that around, it'll help you. Put it where you are when you eat, when you meal plan, all that jazz, and this will help fix you, okay? Get your mind focused. So, number one, what should I start with? Let's start with water. Now there's all these trainers. None of these are, <laughs> all right, are you gonna lose fat because you drank water? No, but, God, there's some weird trends right now. Trainers are walking around with like gallon sized jugs of water and I have clients like, should I drink a gallon of water? And my answer is, hell no. Stop doing that to yourself. And if you do, you better be sweating a ton. And if you do, you better be replacing electrolytes and salt and things like that too. But we do wanna be hydrated. So what's a good rule of thumb for hydration? My very, very scientific rule is drink enough to pee clear at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Oh my God, it's mind blowing, right? Such because I love things to be really simple, okay? Drink enough water that you can pee clearly at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. The reason being, after breakfast, after lunch, drink enough fluid sometime in the next hour, two, three hours that you are peeing clearly. Peeing clearly says your body is sufficiently hydrated. I think most people walk around completely dehydrated and some people are crazy town trying to hydrate like they're trying to become the ocean or a blimp, right? Full of water. <clears throat> You don't want to overhydrate, but most often, people I work with are dehydrated. They barely ever pee during the day. Uh, some of them are teachers and nurses and they don't want to pee. I get it, but it's sort of a problem. If you don't, if you aren't hydrated, number one, your workouts are gonna suck. Number two, you're suppressing your metabolism. You are gonna feel fake hunger. So a lot of times I tell people when they're new and they aren't drinking enough water, right? Um, when you feel crazy hunger pangs at a time that isn't a meal, I want you to drink a big glass of water, give yourself 30 minutes, see if it goes away. So often, the big problem with, with dehydration is it masks itself as hunger, and when we are fake hungry, nine times out of 10, we don't want you know apples and peanut butter, we want like a Snickers or chips or something that's sweet or savory that may or may not be very good for you. So will drinking water make you lose fat? No, but will it? play a role, does, does being dehydrated play a role in getting worse workouts, having more fake cravings, eating too much? Absolutely, so we wanna fix that one. <clears throat> rule number two, my chalk problems. I'll try to write clearly enough. Again, if you're in my challenge, you'll get a printout of this guy nice and pretty without my left-handed handwriting. But number two is protein. When I started working with a lot of female clients, like 80% of my clients are women, what I started looking at is breakfast, no protein, lunch, scanty or no protein, dinner, finally some protein. And boy, there's a problem here. The biggest problem is, if you know from kettlebells what I've talked about, if you wanna get better at losing weight, you've got to at least retain and probably increase muscle by a couple pounds. I'm not talking about bulk, I'm talking about a couple pounds of muscle. Right? unless you already are physically strong. You will not maintain muscle by exercising if you don't have enough protein. And when we don't, look, the problem with, with not having enough of one of the macronutrients, right, fat, protein, carbs, is that you'll fill up with something else. So most of the time when you aren't eating enough protein, what are you eating too much of? Probably carbs. Are carbs bad? No, we don't do these crazy deprivation diets. I don't have you cut like no carbs, all right? I don't teach ketogenic or anything like that. But when you don't have enough protein, you won't retain, retain enough lean muscle, and most of the time you're gonna rely too much on carbs. Okay, number three, frequency. Okay, and my rule is the rule of three plus one. Again, there's a lot of bad information out there. One of the bad information pieces out there comes from the bodybuilding community, and that is eat a ton of meals, eat a ton of small meals, seven, eight meals, whatever a day, okay? 
The idea that you've got to feed your furnace to burn fat is completely crap, okay? You burn fat by having good muscle tone and using that. So you could have two meals a day or 16 meals a day. You're going to burn fat based on your metabolism, which is based on multiple factors, but a lot of it is how much muscle do you have. So we want to build strength and then we want to get the proper frequency. So I don't teach people to eat eight small meals a day because number one, I don't think you should be digesting food all day. I think your body needs to digest and then allowed to get hungry. Digest, be allowed to get hungry. So start with three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Now I will teach other aspects like intermittent fasting and some other tools later along to clients who I work with, but I don't love it in the beginning. Start with your three meals a day, get them right, right, because they have protein, have you, right? Some more stuff coming, but um, if you are starving by lunch or dinner, then add the plus one. So very, very commonly what happens is somebody by two o'clock, I'm sorry, somebody comes to dinner time and they're prepping dinner at you know, six o'clock and they're starving, so they're snacking while they're, they're eating chips and salsa while they're making dinner and then they eat dinner and then afterwards they feel starving, so they eat like a bowl of popcorn and all of a sudden a dinner has turned into like a 2000 calorie dinner because they were too damn hungry. So we want to add this plus one snack. I just screwed it up by circling it. We want to add this plus one snack because you, that was a sign from your body saying we got over hungry and over hungry is deemed is bad news. Okay. So we want to add, I just, <laughs> we want to add the plus one snack to your body. So what I would look at is if you were starving, ravenous, overly hungry by six, six thirty, whatever, then at two or three o'clock, I want you to add a snack like apples and peanut butter, veggies and hummus, something, something simple that has some protein, some vegetables, some fruit, something like that into it. Get, get a protein into that, even into that snack. Always get a protein. It's going to help. Well, all right. All right. Go into more detail. All right. But three plus one. So go back, get a snack, see if you're not ravenous by dinner. For a lot of people, the, you, you'll find your right number by playing with this. Okay. So breakfast, lunch, dinner. Was I ravenous, too hungry, over eight at a meal? Cool, go back, put a snack there, boom, fix the problem. All of a sudden your metabolism's got the right amount of fuel it needs to feel good throughout the day. Because we want to feed and get a right, the right nutrition, but then we want to watch out that we don't overfeed. Okay, then we want, we want to make sure we don't overfeed, so we want to have just the right amount of meals and snacks so we're not spazzing out, freaking out, going, oh my God, Fred, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Number four, this is one I've added recently because what I notice for clients is that when you focus on every meal gets lots and lots of veggies, it's really a great way to lose weight and keep your digestion correct. Again, will any of these tools make you lose fat alone? No, but boy, veggies are gonna help fill you up on the right kind of nutrient dense food and then you aren't gonna overeat. Look, food is all a game. It's all like, how do I fill myself up, get the right amount of nutrients, so I don't feel hungry because I don't want you guys to be like dieting, meaning, oh man, I'm starving. I'm eating 1200 calories. I'm miserable because that, that doesn't work. It's never going to last. Tomorrow I'm going to talk to you about why strength is such an important and missed piece of fat loss and why everybody focuses on, on, on cardio. So the problem is when you don't focus on strength and you focus on all calories, it's the same problem as when you only focus on depriving, dieting and depriving calories. What does it do? I'll say this in the talk, you rob muscle and burn fat indiscriminately. You're both, you're both burning the fat on the outside we want to get rid of and also burning the muscle. The problem being, you're just setting yourself up to screw up your metabolism. So in the beginning, you're like, rock on, I'm kicking ass, I'm, you know, I'm counting 1200 calories a day, I'm losing so much weight. And then three, six, nine months down the road, you're like, I can't keep a pound off me, I've gained 25 pounds past what I was before. It's because we've robbed muscle to lose weight. So we've robbed Peter to pay Paul, right? Is that the phrase? I don't know. So veggies, eat them like they're going out of style, get them, get them into every meal. Breakfast, get them into there, make omelets, right? Oats, throw veggies in, find ways to get vegetables into every meal. Now breakfast is probably the one where it might be harder. I would pretty much go for a smoothie, which is seeds, uh, uh, like a nut milk, like a cashew milk and protein powder and things like that. But lunch and dinner and my snack better be veggie laden. So get tons of veggies in there. It's going to fill you up with the right stuff, nutrient dense, help stabilize blood sugar.
Potatoes don't really count in this category. Uh, corn is not a veggie, but people think it is. Corn, we don't want a ton of, okay? So, but all your other veg veggies are fine. Your root vegetables, your green leafies, your all that kind of stuff. Number five is the weird one. This is something from my acupuncture world, right? I said I was an acupuncturist long before I was a kettlebell instructor. And the word is dampness. Can you see that? Dampness. This is rule number five. Rule number five is really where it's at. This is the place where we want to remove food out of our diet. Now I get some blowback from this because people freak out when they hear about grain free or gluten free and this and that. And there's a lot of discussion around that. But I, what I will tell you from my experience, my clinical knowledge from the treatment room and my knowledge of working with thousands of men and women is dampness is the biggest factor to why people have a hell of a time feeling good and losing weight and not being bloated. Dampness is something that happens from Foods like wheat, dairy, sorry for my lefty, sugar, alcohol, which is really because it's sugar, right? Wheat, dairy, sugar, alcohol, and a bunch of cold, raw, damp food. Okay, this is my this is my disagreement with the whole movement towards raw foodism, not to mention totally lacks enough protein. That's another day that will probably get some feathers ruffled, but we'll deal with that someday. But when we go wheat, dairy, sugar, or a ton of raw food, we're stressing the hell out of our stomach. Our stomach has to warm up that food, make it 100 degrees, turn it into something we can digest it into. The problem with wheat is if we, if we ate wheat that grew in that field and showed up as a baguette and we ate it that day or it went bad, it's probably fine for us. But we have over-processed wheat, soy, all these foods so badly that from infancy to baby to childhood to adult, you've had tons and tons and tons of over-processed wheat and questionable quality dairy and way too much sugar. And as you're older, hopefully, not when you're a kid, alcohol, right? And all these things make digestion very, very difficult. Now, I'm not asking you to give all of them up at once. I think you ought to play with it. I think you ought to take blocks of time and say, hey, for two weeks, I'm gonna go wheat free. Two weeks, I'm gonna go sugar free. And see, all I ask for you is an open mind and see whether it helps or not. This is the, like, this is the thing that brings it all together though. When people take that stuff out of their diet and learn how to stop living on bread, pasta, cereal, juice, all these things, they start, bloating goes away, they have more energy, they're losing fat, their skin doesn't feel as spongy, they firm up, and all these great things happen and they go, holy crap, I'm a believer. Now, everybody who ever does this becomes a believer. Whether they agree with the science, don't agree with the science, this and that, they go off of it, especially, I would say especially, wheat and sugar. When they go off of these things or bring them down to just a cheat day, a cheat meal, like a very nominal amount of their diet, amazing things happen, not to mention you'll lose fat, but more energy, less bloating, uh, all sorts of great stuff. So that is my five rules of nutrition. That's where I want you to focus. Principles and quality of food, okay? I didn't say a thing about counting. I didn't say a thing about how many calories you should, you should eat. If you follow these rules, right? Drink enough water, eat protein and veggies in every single meal, eat three meals a day, and if you need one more because you were starving, add a snack. Get rid of damp foods, eliminate from them or greatly reduce them from your diets. Learn how to eat other stuff, right? Um, this five rules of nutrition has gotten everybody I've ever worked with who's gotten big time results, they've invested in this, okay? Kettlebells to build strength, kettlebells to firm up and create the body the way you want it to look. But if you want to see what's under it, it's the nutrition, okay? Get these two things right, you're going to have awesome results. Tomorrow I'm talking about the fitness aspect of fat loss, and then I'm going to one of my favorite aspects, which is mindset and the treatment pillar is what I call it. So look forward to that. If you're so if you're in the 10 day challenge, then you probably got uh, that you're you've gotten the workouts and you've all. So if you're in the 10 day challenge, this was your nutrition piece of the program. Make sure you're doing your workouts and having a great time with them. If you're looking for a more fully comprehensive program, I've got an online kettlebell program for you. Check it out at onlinekettlebells.com. It's got a massive library of how to work, how to 
uh, videos for learning all the nuts and bolts of kettlebells, picking your kettlebells, tons and tons of workouts, live coaching from my wife Abby and I, an online Facebook community because community and accountability is where the results come from. I can teach you all this stuff, but what we gotta do is put you in the right environment for you to have that success. Plus, meditations, challenges every quarter, all sorts of awesome stuff. Check it out, and I will see you next time.